dear TV gods, it's Spencer Wright thanking you for the intense third season of How to Get Away with Murder. In a show already defined by crazy twists, hookups, and deaths, it seemed impossible for the show to continue to surprise and captivate. However, in How to Get Away with Murder's third season, not only did it continue to shock, but it allowed for rich and genuine development of virtually all of its characters. When thinking of How to Get Away with Murder, the stylized flash forwards to a shocking event is what first comes to mind. In season one, it was the murder of Annalise's husband. In season two, it was Annalise herself being shot. However, in season three, the stakes were raised even higher by weaving an intricate mystery around who is under the sheet. A season-long question revolving around which main character had died in a devastating fire at Annalise's home. To solve this mystery, viewers were treated with a weekly dose of relief when, episode by episode, one character was revealed to still be alive, leading up to the climactic reveal of who was actually dead in the mid-season finale. This narrative style was new for Murder, which had previously kept all details of the flash forward secret until the climactic reveal episode. While some shows would suffer with changing their formula in the third season, Murder excels at the change, allowing for viewers to be more invested and conspiratory than any other seasons before. By slowly peeling back the sheet one episode at a time until the ultimate reveal, audiences were able to feel a sense of genuine anxiety and bewilderment, rather than just seeing what turmoil the troublesome law students got into. While the previous two seasons retained captivation through a single polarizing moment, season three emphasized the horrifying mystery of the climax throughout each episode of the half season, allowing the characters and the viewers equally to experience the stressful thriller. Speaking of the characters, amidst the alarming cliffhanger that the season gravitated around was opportunities for each character to grow, making each one more likable and three-dimensional. In previous seasons, the cast appeared to be afterthoughts in the Annalise Keating show, and since Viola Davis is a powerhouse of an actress and Annalise an enthralling character, this was perfectly acceptable. However, since Wes, Laurel, Michaela, Connor, and Asher were also important to the plot, it was becoming a bit annoying to not have any depth to those five. This all changed in season three, as Wes copes with the sudden murder of his biological father, Laurel struggles with the disappearance of her dangerous boyfriend, Michaela opens up to a new relationship, and parts of her tumultuous past are revealed, Connor experiences a breakup, and Asher attempts to become the optimist of the group following the loss of his family. These characters are tormented and continually placed in horrible situations. And in season three, audiences finally see the impact of this on each of them and are able to understand just how complicated they are. Furthermore, Connor's adorable lover, Oliver, is promoted to series regular, and the sociopathic Frank is allowed to fully let loose, giving both of those characters opportunities of growth. While murder continues to revolve around Annalise, and rightfully so, Season three favors the remaining characters, which truly benefits the show as a whole. While the lives of Annalise and those connected to her continue to get worse in season three, viewers have only great things to celebrate as the third season continues to add mystery and emotion to an already powerful show. We'll all be eagerly waiting to see how the rest of season three plays out when How to Get Away with Murder returns in January after a winter break. A well-rounded prayer always includes a thanks for our blessings and a curse for our afflictions. Blessing, the return of past crimes. Too often in shows, what happens in one season finale will quickly be forgotten over the next five episodes. However, as this season unfolds, not only is Wes's backstory further explored with the convoluted case of the Mahoney family, but the murder of Rebecca from the season one finale makes an ominous return. The remembrance of significant events from past episodes showcases the show's dedication to reality and reiterates how dire the consequences of every action are in the twisty world of murder. Affliction, the angsty bickering between Connor and Oliver, the weakest spot in an exemplary season, the breaking up of this happy couple in the first episode could have led to development of the two individuals. 
but instead this breakup consisted of numerous jealous comments, regretful hookups, and contrasting feelings. Not only did this not provide for meaningful development of either character, it also led to obnoxiously repetitive scenes throughout the course of the season. No prayer is complete without thanking the saints of the respective show, and this time two saints are deserving of praise. Charlie Weber as Frank. Stop me if you've heard this one before. A hitman with a troubled past tries to make amends. It may seem conventional, but Weber's supreme acting elevated his flawed character above the rest. In season three, Frank's desperate attempts to return to the only home he knows results in deaths, destruction, and emotional carnage. Particularly in the second to last episode, as Frank prepares to kill himself to finally please Annalise, Weber shows audiences just how broken and frantic Frank is, making him a character to fear, hate, and sympathize with all at once. Thank you, Saint Charlie. Aja Naomi King as Michaela. Taking a bratty know-it-all and making her lovable and sympathetic? Not an easy thing to do. And yet, in the third season of Murder, King accomplishes just that. As Michaela opens up to a conflicting relationship with goofball Asher and her past comes back to taunt her. With her love for Asher, Michaela drops her harsh, emotionless walls, allowing King the opportunity to show audiences that her character is capable of sweetness and deserving of a healthy relationship. Then, as Michaela's mother appears, King rebuilds those walls, displaying the depths of Michaela's frustration and internalized shame. Through Michaela in season three, the audience is reminded that a woman can be smart, capable, and independent, while also being loving, scarred, and haunted. Thank you, Saint Aja. Thank you all for joining me in prayer. Be sure to check out more Dear TV Gods and other great pop culture articles on EmmertainmentMonthly.com. See you next time for more prayers about another hit TV show. Amen.